Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 12 to 18 in the NIV says, At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished. Though they build houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant vineyards, they will not drink the wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring such distress on all people that they will grope about like those who are blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their entrails like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his jealousy, the whole earth will be consumed for he will make a sudden end of all who live on the earth. It still amazes me when believers become upset when God releases warning words regarding events that are about to take place and when He makes His appeal to mankind to seek Him and not other things. It amazes me even more when believers still pull scriptures out of context as a means to give them permission to live their lives for themselves and their own desires rather than living for God. We can try and sugarcoat the truth or even ignore or pretend that we are not to live for God, but have a right to live our lives the way we want and would like because of grace. Many believers sadly have no fear of the Lord. They try and see how much they can get away with while still being able to make it to heaven. When I consider the price Jesus paid for us, His sacrifice, giving up everything to have us, His commitment, His loyalty and love towards us, His willingness to be tortured, mocked, rejected, crucified on our behalf, and yet many believers treat what He did for mankind as a light thing. They like to disregard the God of the Old Testament who displayed His righteousness and wrath upon mankind for their disobedience and only focus on the gentle Jesus picture often portrayed in church. They are not willing to receive the truth when it is uncomfortable, inconvenient or convicting. They are like those who don't want to hear the truth but rather want to raise up false prophets who would tell them what they would want to hear. The God of the New Testament is the same God of the Old Testament. God displays different parts of His character, His righteousness, justice, grace, wrath and love, mercy, forgiveness, anger towards sin in both. Jesus said He came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. He didn't all of a sudden change His nature in the Old Testament to a completely different nature in the New Testament. He rather made a way for us to draw near to Him through His sacrifice on the cross so that when Daddy God looks at us, He sees us covered by the blood of His Son, which grants us grace but not a ticket to sin or continue to live a life our way rather than for and with Him. So whether believers like the truth or not, Jesus is coming back as a warrior for His bride. We have His grace to help us turn from sin and to become more like Him, but He still is against sin, rebellion and idolatry. If you have been one who thinks you can do just what you want without consequences and trying to see how much you can be in the world and make it to heaven by the skin of your teeth, know that God is not messing around. Do not treat as a light thing what Jesus did for you. He did it all that you could be united with Him and have life to the full in Him, as He is life. So prepare your heart and keep it ready for His coming. Our beautiful Lord Jesus, we can never thank you enough for everything you did and endured for us. There is no one in our lives who would do what you did for us. Some might lay their lives down for us, but there are not many ones who would leave their kingdom, their reputation, their honor, their friends, family, willing to be tortured and have the most horrendous death to mankind for the sake of one person. And yet you did it for each and every one of us. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have treated your commitment, loyalty, love, faithfulness and sacrifice for us as a light thing. Help us to not lose sight of eternity, but to keep it all in full view. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.